Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 8 of our C Sharp for Automation Testing video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about working with methods. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 7 since this part will have some codes from those parts. Alright, so let's get started. Methods in C Sharp. A method is a code block that contains a series of statements. A program causes the statement to be executed by calling the methods and specifying any required method arguments. In C Sharp, every executed instruction is performed in the context of a method. So meaning, a method as it's mentioned here is a code block that contains a series of statements. So in our previous code, if you recollect, we wrote every single thing as a statement that too within the context of a method. Remember, we have something called as a main method in our code block. And we also said that the main method is an entry point for any program to be executed. So all our instruction sets or the statements that we have written, like uh, creating a variable or creating an object and calling that variable and its members, everything we did in the context of a method, that's main method, and then we worked with that, which means you can wrap all your codes into methods as we already did in our main method. We have something like this. We had all these code in our main method and then we can create a method, something like this, like public void old code. And then we can keep all the unnecessary codes into this method. And then we can start working with a new code in our main method. So this way we can also refactor our code a lot refactor is so again meaning you are cleaning up your unnecessary code or you can use that code for any other purpose within your code so that you can you don't have to write the same line of code again and again so that's again uh, called as a refactoring so that's also you can do using your uh, using your methods so what exactly is the syntax of a method then a method will actually contain some movable components in it the first one is this access specifier it can be a public a private a protected internal something like that don't worry about it yet because we have not yet spoken about the access specifier and then modifiers it can be a static modifier or a non-static modifier and then return types it can be of any type remember in our previous video we, we were talking about integer type, string types, boolean types, double type, var type. So you can set the return types here. Again, word of caution is you cannot use a var type as a return type, right? Because var is an implicitly typed variable and uh, you cannot use that as a return type for a method, right? All right, and then method name. So this is the name of a method which you're gonna specify actually for your uh, method. For example, main method is the name of the method and old code was the name of the refactored code that I shown in the previous slide. And then we will have a set of arguments. It can be, it starts with a type and the type can be again integer or string or boolean. And then the argument name, it can be number or something like that. And again, if you note here, in all these angle brackets, I have a square bracket here. The square bracket means this is an optional syntax, meaning you don't necessarily have to specify this modifier, the static. Similarly, you don't, you don't necessarily have to specify a argument for your method. It can be a empty argument method as well. So now your whole method will look something like this. And for example, it's your main method. As you can see, public is the access specifier, static is the modifier, return type is void, and method name is main, and the argument is the type, so the type here is the string array, and the name of the argument is args. Right? So this is the syntax of a method. And there is something called as method overloading. We can also create a method with same name, but with different parameters. This is called as method overloading, which looks something like this. For instance, a public int add 
with two parameters int num1 and num2 is illegal and you can use the same name of a method public int add but here we have specified one more argument as int num3 if you don't specify that then you will get a compile time error saying the same name is uh, is duplicated in your code or ambiguity error so you cannot specify that so your parameter differentiates the methods from the rest of the methods so you can specify same method name in your code like add but the parameter is important so this is your self interest learning corner you can learn something about method overriding so if you have time while watching this video just go ahead and watch method overriding what this concept is all about it's kind of very helpful so let's work with methods and see how things works so for that i'm gonna flip to visual studio all right so this is the same code which we have been working so long in our uh, course so what i'm going to do this time is as we saw in the video i am going to just cut this code and i'm going to put it in a method so there is one other way you can either do control x to cut the code and create a method and put it out there and there is a super cool option called refactoring so you can do this in visual studio 2015 by using this option quick actions and refactoring you can just click this and you can see it brings you up a uh, a bulb here saying that you want to extract this as a method and it also shows uh, the name of the method right here as a new method so uh, let's do this there we go and it says the rename to a new method uh, okay so it has already given a name as a new method out there so it also shows you that include comments so if you select the include comments and preview the changes and hit apply it shows that uh, there is nothing else here but it's okay so there we go so this is the uh, name of the method and automatically specified the access specifier as private modifier as static because you're going to call this method within the static method and that's the reason it is in a static uh, uh, modifier and there is a written type as void and new method which is great so this is how you can refactor your code using visual studio 2015 so currently i'm not going to really use this method just for showing you how you can refactor your code and create it as a method this is how it is right so let's not uh, use this code anymore but still let it be here but if you want to call that particular method as we already saw just call this method here and then if I just run this code you can see that it just executes meaning it executes this code by calling just this one line of code and this is what I was talking about the refactoring or cleaning up your old codes and putting it just in one line and let's say if I want to call this method in anywhere in our code or in the project then probably you can just call just this line of code the new method and this will actually call these lines of code to be executed and which is great because you are going to write only this code only one time in your lifetime for the project and you're going to use that particular code that you have written the logics that you have written in anywhere within your project by just calling the name of the method which is nothing but the new method right so now uh, let's say I'm gonna stop this and let's create a very very simple method that we saw in our example slide for example I'm gonna create a add method for this time so instead of writing everything in the same class we already created a class in here called test class 1 so let's use this class a little efficiently so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna delete these lines of code out here and let's write a method here like public void which is the written type and then I'm gonna specify here as add and I'm just gonna leave this blank for now right so there is no parameter within this add and let's write a console dot write line here and let's say this is empty add method and let's create one more method with the same name but this time if you create this you'll actually get an error here it says the type test class one already defines a member class called add uh, with the same parameters type do you know that the information is too clear with same parameter types so the parameter type is empty that's what it's saying so if i create something like this int num1 
comma int num2 that is gone the reason is because the parameter is different and now if I just try to do something like this I can just say num1 plus num2 so just doing an add operation right here I'm just gonna save this guy and let's go to the program and let's get rid of this uh, new method so in order to call the methods from a different class the first thing we need to do is to create a instance object for that particular class so I'm gonna say test class is equal to new test class one good so test class dot you can see there is a method called add but wait where is my one more method that I created the add method right we just have two methods but currently it is just showing one add method that is so bad but if I go to the add method here it's also showing one more one useful information here plus one overload do you remember in the slide we were talking something about method overloading that's exactly what it is if I just open a parenthesis here you can see it shows something like one of two meaning this is the first method of the list of members you have within your type which is the test class one and this is a empty parameter method and if I click this arrow here it brings me up to the next method which is defined within the test class one num1 comma num2 right and you can also note here that this num1 is kind of little bold compared to this num2 the reason is because it is expecting you to enter some value out there let's say if I enter 12 and there's a little bulb here let's see what is this it shows something ah what is that it is generate a method with one parameter because it knows that there is no method within the test class one with only one parameter so it is so intelligent enough to say that there is no method available to perform an operation with single parameter right so let's do this 12 plus 12 which is going to turn 24 right I'm gonna save this and now if you run this code you can actually see oops this is an MTR method oh my god I think I did a small mistake here if I just copy paste it that's the problem this is add method with two parameters and there is one more problem that you will face I'll just show you what it is if I try to run this code you will see this this is an add method with two parameters which is great but where is my result right that result will only appear if you actually do a plus here for concatenation right and now if you run this you can see 12 plus 12 but it is not actually doing an addition the reason is because you are actually doing a concatenation here did you see that plus num1 plus num2 it actually thought that you are doing a string concatenation instead of a addition operation to make this little simple for this time I'm just gonna create a variable called result and here I'm just gonna pass the num1 plus num2 which is going to actually addition operation and then we can just specify the result right here I can just save this and now if I try to run this code you can see it is actually turning this is add method with two parameter and something 24 which is kind of ugly but it's okay because there is no space in here let's do a small spacing uh, for little neat uh, result here right so this is how you can actually make use of your method and perform the operation and if I want to call the add method then all I have to do is test class add there we go and now if I execute this it just shows the result of the add method uh, empty parameter as well so which is great but you can also perform an additional operation with an add method here which is nothing but the return type of a method so all you have to do is just create a written type right here by specifying the type and then you can use a keyword called return and perform the operation so in order to do that all you have to do is do a few change in the code and it actually works fine but for that you have to wait for next video
So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.